Mark, can you hear us? Yes, yes, no. I yeah. think there's a problem with my... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So we, we are asking you if you could start the proceedings, actually. Okay, I'm so sorry. Uh, no problem, so, no problem. We will start now? Yeah, I will start now. Okay. No, no, no. We will have some kind of introduction of you to the today's audience. Okay. All right. Yeah, you right, right. some couple of minutes. Okay, Mark. Okay, right. ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, rejoining for the afternoon session or post lunch session. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Um, today, now we have uh, actually one of the rising stars of uh, aquatic fungal research with us, uh, Dr. Mark Calaban from Philippines. Uh, more about Dr. Mark Calaban from Dr. Roy Sharma. Dr. Roy, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shuna. Uh... So uh, welcome, Dr. Mark. So Dr. Mark is an uh, assistant professor in the Division of Biological Sciences at the University of Philippines. He earned his doctorate in Biological Sciences from the Center of Excellence in Fungal Research in May Phar Long University, Thailand. Dr. Mark specializes in taxonomy, phylogeny, and classification of aquatic fungi. He also curates two websites dedicated to aquatic fungal classifications, that is www.freshwaterfungi.org and www.marinefungi.org, showcasing his expertise and contribution to the field. Thank you, Dr. Mark, for joining uh, today. Uh, I think with this, uh, you can start uh, your talk. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. So I'll start my presentation with a definition of an aquatic fungus. So basically, based on the traditional classification of, of our aquatic fungi, they uh, base that on the presence in water and their activity. So basically, if it's a um, resident fungi, wherein the presence in water is permanent with a constant periodic or sporadic activity, so they are called indwellers. But some aquatic fungi are also immigrants. So you have here the migrants and the versatiles, wherein the migrants have periodic presence in water and they are not permanent. But for versatiles, they are irregular and their activity could be periodic, sporadic for the migrants. And for the versatiles, they have uh, no activity or could be sporadic. But also, there are aquatic fungi that are transient, so they have no activity in fungi. Maybe they just came from a terrestrial runoff or, yeah, um, from the other environments. That, but oh, when they are submerged already, there are no activity. No? They are uh, not growing properly. And, uh, well, after quite some time, they, uh, I mean, perish on that particular substrate. Conventionally, the aquatic fungi is divided into definitions like obligate or facultative. For obligate, you should, they complete their life cycle, whole life cycle in water. So, um, well, again, most of uh, previous identification of aquatic fungi, you know, they use this kind of definition, including facultative. So facultative, for example, if it's a marine fungi, so there are um, species from that particular genera that can thrive on freshwater and terrestrial environments. So that's the definition of facultative fungi. For marine fungi, um, they convene in uh, uh, Pang et al. They provide um, a good definition of what marine fungus is. This is basically um, in, from, from a view where in marine derived fungi long time ago are not really considered as marine fungi. Uh, that's why there is like um, a very vague definition, very not clear what, what constitutes a marine fungus. So they convened and uh, they, they come from a consensus of a definition of what a marine fungus is. So marine fungus is any fungus that is recovered repeatedly from marine habitats. It means repeatedly it includes terrestrial genera or species that were isolated on different substrates of uh, um, from marine environments. It is able to grow or sporulate in marine environments. So basically, if you have sediments, substrates like a wood, and uh, you find like genera from Aspergillus or Trigoderma or Cladosporium, 
as long as they grow well and sporulate on that particular substrata, you can consider that one as marine fungi. It, they also form symbiotic relationships with other marine organisms. So when you isolate on corals, on fishes, that doesn't cause diseases. No? So they are also considered as marine fungi. Another is they adapt and evolve at the genetic level or be metabolically active. So, well, again, when you do certain analysis, an evolutionary at the genetic level, no, or you put some um, uh, analysis like uh, met metabolomics no, to determine the, the composition of the particular fungi compared to terrestrial one, then maybe you can find the differences. But at the genetic level, that particular fungus already evolved to adapt on marine environments. So whether it's from other terrestrial genera, yeah. So they, they have like, um, marine-derived fungi is already equals to marine fungi. So in, when you see uh, pop, um, publications dealing with aspergillus and penicillium, uh, they are already included in the classification of marine fungi. So where you can find them, so basically from the intertidal, from the coastal area, from the intertidal rocky shore to littoral to subtidal and deep sea, uh, you can find uh, aquatic, I mean, marine fungi. You know? They can also be found on uh, other artificial environments, like example, aquaculture setup in marine environments, the mariculture system in estuary, wherein there is um, different substrates, then you can uh, find aquatic fungi or marine fungi there. So the morphology of marine fungi, well, again, the same with freshwater fungi or other terrestrial fungi, you have ascomycetes, the defining characteristics of ascomycetes, they have acai enclosed by, well, again, ascomata, and you can see the ascospores there, so different ascospores. These are common morphology. Uh, you will also have coelomycetes. So coelomycetes, they are covered by a peridium or conidiumatal wall, but the defining characteristics are the conidiogenous cell, wherein uh, the conidia emerge. Take note that the morphology of coelomycetes and ascomycetes, when you observe them on macro level, it means that uh, if you have your dissecting microscope, you cannot really distinguish the, the, between the two unless you cut the, the uh, ascomata or the fruiting body. For the hyphomycetes, uh, well, these are also common. So you have the conidia yogino cell. So you have the conidia force and the conidia. And some of the uh, intri intricate uh, design of uh, the conidio, uh, conidia is from the hyphomycetes. Uh, well, again, what are the substrates of uh, aquatic fungi or marine fungi? Basically, again, we go back to the definition of what aquatic fungus or marine fungus is. You should uh, observe them or collect them from submerged organic material, water, sediments, foam, aquatic flora, and fauna, which are actually already discussed by Professor um, Sridhar a while ago. And the lifestyle of aquatic fungi uh, depends on your target or objective, so you can isolate saprobic, parasitic, endophytic, or pathogenic. Take note that collecting techniques are crucial to determine if a fungus can be considered aquatic. So every time we review a published paper, if we wanted to include them in the um, classification of marine fungi, we always check how they collect and provide the details. Now, if uh, there's a vague or not clear um, descriptions of the materials and methods of that particular paper. So we tried to email the, the author, the corresponding author to, to have a clear answer so we can include the, that particular taxa. So these are some of the images that we get, old and the current images. Now we collect some substrates, usually um, twigs, uh, from from uh, different habitats and marine environments. So this one is a salt marsh area. The same here, salt marsh area. This is Professor Jones, the active, actively collecting uh, substrates no, from UK. And this is Professor Pang, uh, collecting um, yeah, halophytic organisms also. So we also collect from 
uh, well again, Ari Nicholas Punjai and my Nicholas Punjai from mangroves, also from the wetland. But this one, this I think this is a freshwater environment. And this one is a mangrove from an intertidal rocky shore, and also intertidal rocky shore substrates like skeleton and predict that animals or um, yeah twigs and uh, submerged bamboo poles, no, from the mariculture system of that particular uh, place. Then uh, we also do baiting. So if you wanted to provide an occurrence, no? if you wanted to study ecological aspects of marine fungi, then you can do baiting. So you have different woods there, test blocks, no? then you submerge on a marine environment. Then for quite some time, maybe one month, two months, three months, then you can collect and observe uh, aquatic fungi or marine fungi. And you incubate then, yeah. So these are some of the uh, images that uh, I mean substrates that we use to directly observe the fruiting body of uh, marine fungi. So you have here, this is from the publications of uh, Teva data no, from the occurrence of uh, mangrove fungi. Then you can see here the different uh, habitats uh, from the sediment. Then you have also submerged material from mangrove environments and also from salt marsh uh, habitats. Take note that everything here are submerged. No? Once we collect the specimen, sometimes they are in the mud and we try to clean that uh, particular substrates and incubate. Take note, this is a beautiful pictures of uh, Corolospora attach, attaching to uh, the sediments. No? So let's go to the history of marine fungi. Basically, it was started in 1849 we in the first report of marine fungi from, uh, from Mars plant Typha, and they isolated and observed Tifficula typharum and also Speria posidonia in, in Posidonia Oceanica. In 1849 to 1867, so you have early works of the different uh, marine micrologists you know, from Sutherland to Sparrow to Crowan and Daru. Then in 1894, uh, you have first report of yeast in marine environments. But what is uh, amazing on this timeline is was was on 1944, where in Barghon and Linder isolated and observed a fascinating environment. This is uh, from from driftwoods, no? and they observed different uh, structures of fungi there. And uh, also in in 1950s to 1960s, no? the additional marine mycologists sprouting and uh, study different habitats no, and substrates to isolate marine fungi. And in 1966, there is a first international marine mycology symposium initiated by Professor Hunt. Then uh, there are studies in the 70s until now. Uh, there are groups that are active, usually from um, Thailand group, from the laboratory of Professor Hyde, and from the students of Professor uh, Sarma in India, um, Professor Gareth Jones in UK and uh, from Spain and also from Mexico. They're active mycolo marine mycologists already studying uh, fungi you know, in various uh, uh, marine environments and various techniques. So actually this data that I'm presenting from the individual studies of marine fungi to biodiversity studies even marine bioprospecting, no? these are scattered data of uh, fungi. So what we wanted to, to have is uh, a database that is solely, um, the sole purpose is to gather all the scattered data in one platform and provide the classification. This one is to give a marine, my, I mean, all mycologists uh, a one platform that can check the classification of marine fungi every time. No? So um, para, it's like a one-stop shop of uh, marine fungal classification. And also we provide, we wanted to provide an avenue where a geographical distribution of marine fungi is highlighted and also the different descriptions and illustrations of marine fungi. So, well, again, the internet has become a major source for obtaining information worldwide. Over the last decades, Fungal research has extended to vast amount of data leading to the development of many websites. And as you can see in the screen, 
these are just few websites. No? So one thing is also an integrated database now, wherein the, the molecular data, for example, the GenBank have provided uh, DNA protein and even articles. Similarly, there are some other websites which deal with specific mycological topics. And as you can see here, you have Mycobank and Xungorum if we wanted to um, deposit the names. No? And also the yeast uh, from Gargelera, Marine Species. So these are FUNSA general websites if you wanted to check the um, fungal listing. But the actually um, very, very, um, not very general. So there are no deep uh, website wherein it tackles only marine fungi. So um, in the laboratory of Kevin Hyde, uh, they also highlighted the different um, newly established website and you can check these websites wherein it's already published also. Example, the outline of fungi were in the global consortium, the newly published paper of 550 plus mycologists. So they are listed in the outline of fungi. And the outline of fungi is also um, a biennial platform that were in the published papers every two years for the, not two years, maybe a year, annual publication of the edition and the updated classification of general fungi and fungus like taxa. And also, uh, they produce a lot of websites where it deals with a specific um, taxa. For example, Sordariomycetes in the sordariomycetes.org, Dothidiomycetes for Dothidiomycetes.org, and also Basidiomycota for the Basidio.org. Um, for aquatic fungi, we uh, establish also the freshwaterfungi.org. So again, this is an up-to-date classification of freshwater fungi. And the uh, old uh, website is the fungi.life from the Illinois, from the group of Dr. Scherer and Raha. So they, we continuously updating the classification of freshwater fungi also. So, well, in 2019, uh, Professor Jones at um, provided an online resource for marine fungi. They formally established and published the marinefungi.org, wherein, well, again, the main purpose is to provide data on the distribution of marine fungi. Currently, we have uh, projects, so we, uh, we try to document all the fungi worldwide with the specific place, so country, origin, and we wanted to determine the distribution per species. So I hope maybe after a year, you know, we can provide you data on that. We also supply online information on classification species description, specimen types, and distribution with each species described with illustrations where possible. And uh, the fungi, uh, marine fungi website also provide a higher classification of all documented marine fungi every time we publish papers. No? So th that's our um, a promise to the scientific community to, to provide an up-to-date classification maybe every two years if we have enough data to to support uh, the numbers and also to, if there are major um, changes in the classification of marine fungi. So the taxonomic classification of marine fungi is uh, highlighted in marinefungi.org. I want you to share the website. So this is the uh, interface of marine fungi. So you have the higher classification here. So you have the indices, and you also have, for the different parts, you will have the listing and the data classification of marine fungi. Take note in the home tab, you are also provided with the number of marine fungi and the date where it was updated and the different listing of the phyla, the classes, orders, families, and genera. We also provide illustrations and notes of the different marine fungi so this one, oh, we try to gather data you know, from different marine mycologists. So they provide updated notes regularly, you know, periodic um, updates. For example, if you wanted to know about Okinomyces coquilatus, it was published by Pang et al. It was synonymized from the Rimaspera coquilata and Halosperia coquilata. And you can see here the descriptions, the taxonomic um, notes provided also. 
and the distribution of that particular taxon. Taking, you can also have a key references wherein you can be guided properly, you know, uh, the history of that particular taxon. And from the different taxa here, you are also provided the recent publications. If you wanted to check or read papers about marine fungi, or even supplement your example, you have class and you wanted to supplement from the new publications, then you can check the recent publications. We also provided the history of marine mycology. So this one from the first International Marine Mycology Symposium to, well, again, symposium in China. So it was provided here. Uh, we also outline the fungal-like organisms. This one we usually have uh, revised. So Professor Pang and Bennett, Ruel Bennett, uh, they are the one assigned to uh, fungi, fungal-like organisms. And we also, we, we wanted to, um, I mean, every time we wanted to check the, the usage of marine fungi. So this one, where is it concentrated? And what are the numbers of users? Uh, example, most of the data, uh, I mean, marine mycologists from United States and China usually check uh, marinefungi.org. So I, I guess most of these countries have laboratory uh, dealing with uh, marine fungal studies. So let's go first. Why we wanted to have a um, one one database uh, of marine fungi. Take note that the number of marine fungi from the estimated number of Jones and Mitchell in 1996, there are only 1,500. And uh, this is just an estimated number. For the Kispapo 2005, it is 10,000. And uh, from the Jones 2011, it's 10,000. Mostly um, areas, or groups are from the Indophytes, Algicolus, and Cryptic species, uh, around 6,000 species maybe. And the uh, marine yeast and marine derived fungi are the highest also with 1,500 each. Take note that this is just an estimated number of marine fungi. In uh, 1979 until 2015, so this one, you can see that the number of uh, marine fungi is increasing from 1979 and following year 209 to 1,112 in Jones et al. 2015. Jones et al. 2015 provided an outline of marine fungi um, from classification of marine ascomycota and anamorphic taxa. Take note that, uh, well, again, it's just on the morpholo morphological aspect. And he also highlighted some morpholo morphological and molecular data. But in uh, 2019, he highlights the importance of um, molecular data, and he also have um, classification listing of uh, marine fungi based on that classification, updated classification that year. So Jones et al. 2019 provided 1,257 species. And uh, in our latest publication, it's around 1,898 species already. Take note, it's increasing. Um, but <laughs> the, the published paper, what actually it's a 2022 data of, uh, from, from our publication. And we try to incorporate new data from 2023 and it's already 1,947 species. So I think it will be more higher because we, we have some data left to encode in the Marine Fungi website. Take note that from 100, some 100 plus to 200 plus become 1,947. Um, the main reason there's an increase is the incorporation of molecular data in taxonomic studies. I guess some of the species are cryptic, so uh, to, for, to delineate the species, then you need to provide uh, molecular data, not just the ITS, but again, the protein coding genes. And uh, we also provided um, uh, all the classifications of the phyla. So it totals to 1,898. And take note that the highest uh, 
phylum is Ascomycota with 1,561 species. And some of the basal foods are a very few representative. But again, I think there's more, but um, there are a few people studying on basal fungi. Uh, we, we have difficulties in isolating them, and it should have a proper uh, laboratory that only tackles or deals with basal fungi. But maybe, who knows, maybe after ten, five to ten years, we will have more data on the basal fungi. Um, if you wanted to know more about the updates on the classification and numbers of marine fungi, then check our papers. It's an open access from the Tanika Marina. Then you can find all the um, fungi there. So there's a supplementary file that we listed all the species that was not listed by Professor Jones in their paper in 2019. So again, we keep updating. And we are really grateful to Marine Fungi website because um, even us, though we, because we have an online platform that we incorporate every time and we check the number, the, the number and the classification. And if you wanted to publish that one, then we have already the data. So that's the, the beauty of uh, depositing data on online databases. Take note that the classification becomes higher as of 11, October 11, so 1,916. The same, most of the data are from the phylum Ascomycota. And take note, uh, on the Marine Fungi website, most of the data are from Sordariumycetes, Dutidiumycetes. Now, these are dominant classes of marine fungi, followed by Eurotiumycetes. Well, again, Eurotiumycetes encompasses all genera that are, have terrestrial counterparts, so you have Aspergillus, Penicillium, from Aspergillaceae. And when you try to observe the pattern of Pleosporalean taxa, from the order Pleosporales uh, and Eurotiales have the highest number of okay? And when you observe from the familial level, so Aspergillaceae, well, again, these are Aspergillus and Penicillium, have the highest number followed by Hylospiriaceae from the order Microscales. So, mga Hylospiriaceae, some of them are in Nicholas Fungi that will be tackled by Dr. Wells later. So, yeah. And we also incorporate new morphology. For example, on uh, old paper, they did not include the morphological data of that particular taxa. No? So we tried to observe them and ask uh, the particular group to provide us morphological data that we will supplement on the updated classification of marine fungi. So, for example, you have Microascus trigonosporus and Cenereus. These are from uh, our Chinese collaborate, collaborators, we also have Monos Parascus canobalus, uh, a unique marine fungus. We also um, collaborate with people from uh, Saudi Arabia, Professor Mohabed, Mohammed Abdal Wahab incorporated data from their newly introduced species like Savoriella sarushimana and the new genus Caligimaisis marinus. And also from Thailand, so this is a new record, written in the Hestron Brogueria from, of course, it was isolated in Brogueria, but this one, they isolate, I isolated this on, I think, Rhizophora. So the list of marine fungi, um, you can scan this, or again, you can go to the website, the updates on the classification numbers of marine fungi, the paper, and you can see here, there's a supplementary file. And uh, when you download this, so it will redirect you to the supplementary file of all the taxa that was not listed in the 2019 paper. And you can double check. You can also email me if you wanted to have the complete list of marine fungi. Uh, we wanted to share it to everyone if you're working with marine fungi. So every time you can check and uh, double check and you can um, email us so you can be part of uh, the consortium, for example, and every time we publish the updated classification every two years maybe, then we can add you as, you, uh, as long as you provide us the morphology. And uh, well, again, if it's available, the phylogenetic tree of that particular taxa. I'd like to uh, emphasize also that uh, um, from the group of Dr. Sarma and, uh, well, again, De De Dr. Deva, they also provided us data. 
and uh, well, the data provide the, the, the classification of mangrove fungi. So I'd like to thank our curators. Actually, it's not just a one-man work. So it's a collaboration with different ornithologists. Professor Jones uh, actually is the like um, the mind, the behind the uh, marine fungi, and uh, me are the curators and uh, Aporilio Carlo is currently a PhD student working on marine fungi also in Thailand. Professor Hyde, Professor Abdul Wahab, Professor Hagistad, and Professor Rama from, um, they are, Hagistad and Rama provided us temperate fungal data. And Professor Pang in Taiwan, Professor Walker in Canada, and Professor Fryer also in Canada. So these are uh, the curators that uh, we also always divided the data you know, for them to check if it's a marine fungus or not and also to keep us updated with the classification of marine fungi so i would like to acknowledge you know, the micro asia and micro india for inviting me to have a short talk about the online database of marine fungi and also from the balik phd grant so that's for my part thank you very much and uh, I rest my case. Thank you, Ma Dr. Mark Kavapan, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions, please raise your hand. I will let you ask the question. Anybody has any question? Or maybe this time I wanted to have, I mean, I would like to invite you all if you wanted to join Marine Fungal Group with that with the Thailand Laboratory. I guess they have scholarships there, so you can email directly Professor Hyde. Uh, well, again, uh, back up with your supervisors in India no? and he will be happy to well again fund students working that will work on marine fungi. Professor Jones also funding funding currently funding students no? in Thailand. So yeah, email them and uh, collaborate with them. No? They are kind people. Yeah, Dr. Mark, uh, so I have a question. Can I ask you? Yes, yes. Um, where do we find missing map? <laughs> <laughs> That's a uh, decadal uh, question. No? But again, um, every time if our group asks where we can find further fungi, maybe we need to have a data of the geographical distribution of marine fungi first, which we don't have now. Uh, so we cannot really pinpoint wh where are the missing fungi. But based on what we have, you know, there are a lot of countries, I mean, uh, regions in the world that doesn't have data on marine fungi. So maybe we can find there. And also from the, the, current, uh, the current techniques that they're using. So I went to Korea and there's a group working on the dark, I, I don't know, dark fungi. So they use high sequencing techniques you know, and most of their data they don't have um, cultural cultural counterpart. So uncultured fungi every time and uh, less similarities in Janbang. I think we can find more on the deep sea fungi or other hosts, the other countries that doesn't have uh, data yet. So yeah, and you can read the paper, where are the missing fungi? So there's an article. Okay. What, about what, article. What, yeah. I want to get to your comment about yeah. the, how the Indian subcontinent is doing uh, with respect to you know discovery of a new marine fungi or marine fungi available in the waters or whatever or sediments compared to other parts of the world because you have data within your data this right for the sediments we are currently checking because again no, no. I, I mean how I mean to say I mean to say how Indian subcontinent is doing in marine fungal research compared to the other parts of the world actually. I think you have a good data of marine mangrove fungi, actually mangrove fungi. 
from the Professor Sidhar and Sarmas group, uh, most of the data from from the Mangliklus fungi and even salt marsh fungi, uh, you have data on that one. So I think you are working well <laughs> compared to other countries. Uh, well, again, some data are from South, Southeast Asia that is more concentrated in Thailand, even China now is currently working on mangrove fungi. Um, Philippines, we have we are still starting. I just went back here, so I'm trying to uh, have a group here also. Then in um, well again, uh, groups from from the American part, American region. So they have also working on marine fungi now. And uh, take note that most of these data are actually old already, especially the biodiversity studies. The data doesn't have molecular um, counterparts. So I think it's good if we wanted to have um, more laboratories that incorporate molecular data so we can double check the identification or even the identity of the particular toxin well. So I guess it's okay. Now. But now we have, I hope I can share you next year. Now. So there's, we are working now on a database of all the fungal sequences of marine fungi. So we, we try to highlight what are the, uh, well, again, uh, species that doesn't have molecular data yet. So a particular group can study that well or, or recollect the specimen and obtain the sequence data. And uh, also what are the, um, uh, well, well, how can I say this one? Um, what are the sequences or taxon that only have ITS? No? And uh, we need to provide baby protein coding genes to have a good backbone, good back, uh, support phylogenetic backbone tree. No? So that's, that's the, uh, we are currently working with, and we wanted to share it to everyone also, maybe if you have data already, hopefully a year. Yeah. So I, I think we will be presenting that one to the International Mycological Congress. So if you have time, Professor Jones will be part of the talk, yeah. and we'll be supporting the data to him. So hopefully you can join. Okay, hey Mark, last question. You know, when mm -hmm. I defending my PhD thesis, one of the questions uh, asked by the external examiner was, do you believe in strict or true asexual fungi? Similarly, Dr. Mark Alaban, do you believe in true or strictly marine fungi? Oh, that's really a tricky question, you know, to do it asexual marine fungi. Um, currently, uh, we I have data I have, I, I don't know if I, I wanted to share this, but, but we have unpublished data that we, we provided molecular data to a sexual fungi and they clustered to taxa that have sexual morphs already. And we cannot really share it yet. But maybe because of the intricacies of a sexual fungi, um, maybe they're already defined long time ago. They have already sexual morphs, but because most of the marine fungi, I mean, asexual marine fungi, I know very, very, what is it, the helicosporus, uh, hyphomyces every time, no? So, well, I think I believe with, now, for now, for now, I believe. <laughs> I wanted to say yes. Maybe. Uh, I wanted to know, um, do you believe in true yeah. marine fungi? Is it, are there anything called true marine fungi? Yes, yes, they have true marine fungi, but but very few. You know. For example, you have uh, Piriconia, Piri, uh, now Achenomyces, Achenomyces from the group that have similar morphology with Piriconia, but if you provide them molecular data, no, even though the Ascus, the Conidia is the same with the, with Piriconia, it clustered with the marine fungal group from the genus Achenomyces. Um, also, some of the Corolospora, the Chlamydosporus, when you find the substrate, for example, the Calcareos, and the, from the skeleton, from, from the, in, the mangrove area, you can find the, the Helicosporus um, Cunidia there, and some Chlamydosporus that looks like um, multi, multi-nucleated bodies. When you sequence them, they are actually from, well, I want to share this one, <laughs> it's okay from the Corolospora, from the genus Corolospora. And we found out that maybe the Corolospora group have a unique adaptation when it comes to 
well again attaching themselves to marine substrates no? the morphology is quite unique but uh, i will not we will not publish that one because it will contradict to a more <laughs> sophisticated a morphology of a sexual morph of marine fungi but hopefully if we have molecular data for those asexual morphs maybe one day you know we can provide uh, well support that well again they are true marine fungi true asexual marine fungi. dr shanai can i dr shanai uh, i just uh, want to yeah professor sharma please yeah uh, uh dr calabon it's a good presentation wonderful presentation uh, okay. I just have uh, one uh, uh, clarification. Um, mm -hmm. There are uh, a number of uh, species reported from uh, uh, culture independent studies, uh, environmental mm -hmm. DNA studies uh, from the deep sea and various other uh, analysis uh, using various molecular techniques. Are those species are also included in the database, marine fungi website database? Currently, it's not included. Uh, we mm -hmm. wanted to have the cultural aspects with uh, with morphology first because we wanted to well again to encourage everyone to study marine fungi you know based on the data that they have and also to simplify the work of chemical natural products uh, experts uh, we have another project hopefully uh, we can share data soon we wanted to have all the specific uh, all the fung fungal taxa that was isolated using uh, what, what we had said those techniques you know? And we wanted to to check if uh, what are the common group the, that they were associated with, and uh, and also the geographical distribution because most of the studies now incorporate the high sequencing techniques, and I think um, we are focusing on sediments now. Uh, we are still finishing the water part. Um, yeah. Hopefully, we can incorporate that one in the Marine Fungal website soon. Yeah, soon. Thank we you. Thanks. We try to. Thank you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have still have any questions, please raise your hand. Okay, Vishal, please. Vishal, yeah, please, Vishal. Vishal, please ask your question. Yeah. Vishal, you may ask your question. Yeah. So actually, sir, myself is Vishal Kumar. Actually, I'm from ICMR. I'm working on cancer biology. My question is like, uh, normally we have seen many diseases associated with the fungus, like fungus associated disease. So is there any chances of like marine fungus disease associated with the marine fungus? So far, when it comes to uh, human, human, uh, I mean, marine fungi that cause diseases. I think there are no reports yet. But what I know from from our data, there are species that were isolated. I mean, introduced isolated first. The holotype is from from human uh, uh, from human that cause diseases. But they also have counterpart from marine environments. But I think they're not causing diseases because, well, I, I try to isolate them and they are very slow growing. So how can they uh, further spread if they are very slow growing? But who knows if I think uh, what I know, they just cause diseases from marine organisms, but not from human yet. Hopefully not. But again, fungi are opportunistic. <laughs> So as long as you have a very low immun immunocompromise, then maybe, well, if you are always uh, um, exposed to that uh, particular fungi, then maybe you will have the disease. But again, they are not really uh, disease-producing organisms. Um, Samradhi, please. Samradhi, please. Good afternoon, sir. This is Samruddhi Biranje. Uh, I'm actually a first year biotechnology student from Goa. So the thing is that I just wanted to ask you about, is there any uh, specific in-depth research done on bioluminescent mushrooms? Bioluminescent mushrooms in marine environments? Uh, yes, sir. I think not yet. But more of mushrooms can be found in mangrove habitats. No? But in the intertidal rock shore, none yet. But if you wanted to study them, uh, maybe you can initiate. 
And you can ask uh, Dr. Samantha Karuna Ratna. Yes, sir. But most of them are from terrestrial environments. From, from what is so is there any possibilities if i isolate the uh, bioluminescent mushroom in a lab and then uh, we can can we actually see the luminescence even in the labs i think i i i will disagree working with the, the, the mushrooms in the lab with bioluminescence from marine environments i think uh -huh. none yet based on my data, based on what I isolated and cultured long time ago, even it's a basidiomycetus taxa, most of them are not bioluminescent. But who knows if you are uh, work, I mean, walk around with the mangrove ecosystems, with the vast mangrove ecosystems, maybe you can find one bioluminescent. But for now, yes. I think it will be difficult for you to work on that one. Uh, yes, uh, the same yeah. thing I got response. Yeah. You are just first here, you go it in a little slow manner. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Damia, yes. uh, can please? Sir, good afternoon. Uh, sir, I am working in enerfighting fungi from sea grasses. Sir, could you please mm -hmm. um, suggest me the best website for searching after that uh, uh, we get the DNA isolation or no? After sequencing, could you please suggest me the I mean, best website so that I can uh, directly I mean, get the, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the DNS level very correctly. Well, if you wanted to identify using molecular phylogenetic tree of your um, isolates from your sea grasses, uh, you need to have, well, again, multi locus phylogenetic analysis you know, from the nuclear the ribosomal to protein coding genes. I think it's better. And from that point, you can check the website from the list of all the uh, taxa. I can provide you the list. You can just email me. Uh, there you can see all the marine fungi. And some of them, we provide the data of uh, particular seaweed species. And you can double check. So if not, so that's a new uh, habitat or new record in that particular um, seaweed uh, species. But yeah, websites, well, again, you need to go back to GenBank and provide the uh, backbone support, maybe multi-locus phylogenetic analysis, because most of the fungi isolated from sea grasses are from terrestrial genera. So I, guess I, 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 would, I would not recommend ITS only. Uh, provide protein coding genes no, to have a better resolution of your phylogenetic tree. Okay, any more questions? Thank you, sir. Any last question? Anyone? Oh, I just want to emphasize Deva have a chat. Well, again, they isolated Medicopsis romeroi sexual morph from motifet mangroves that have potential to cause fungal disease in immunocompromised patients. Yeah. Deva is my uh, senior who is <laughs> baccalaureate degree and may follow on. Uh, Dr. Mark, last question for you. From yes, Shetty. yes. From Shati Talashi. Shati, please ask your question. You are not audible. Oh, wait, have I unmuted you? Okay, you are. You can. Shati Talashi, please ask your question. You are not audible, Shati. Sorry. Shati, you are not audible. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mark Calabar. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, wonderful. Am I now? No. I'm sorry. Okay, now yeah, you can speak. Thank you for noticing. Thank you. Hello, Mark. Good afternoon. Thank you for sharing Hello. lovely information about how we can find more about endophytes online. And I think it's a, it's great work there. Um, I would like to know uh, what if if we say what what can you let us know for this year? What is the breakthrough in marine endophytes for the year 2023? Breakthrough in research about uh, marine endophytes. Thank you. Well, most of the research of marine endophytes in, well, again, sea weeds or sea grasses, always in one line. You know? they, they want to bioprospect the marine fungi for that one. And I guess that will be the, well, again, not a breakthrough, but a pattern of, uh, of studies in marine endophytes. And maybe one day, if you have all the um, facilities in your laboratory, I think there are studies incorporating metabolomics, 
proteomics, genomics of marine fungi, marine fungal endophytes that could actually, well, provide more data when it comes to their, um, what is that, capacity to, I, I forgot a good term for that one, but um, to further deduce why they are producing that particular compounds um, and compare it to their terrestrial counterparts. I think that's a new avenue if you, if you wanted to ask me about marine fungal studies. I think there are some groups already working on the comparison of um, metabolites from marine fungi, the same species that was isolated from as marine endophytes than from terrestrial endophytes. And uh, well, that's the logical answer every time as well. They have dissimilar, dissimilar different uh, metabolites because again, they already have different environments, so they produce different compounds. But again, that's a good avenue for me, if you ask me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you Shruti. Um, uh, Dr. Roy Sharma, final comments from you, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Krishna. Thank you, Dr. Mark. Thank you for a very nice uh, enlightening lecture on aquatic and marine fungi. And uh, I think the fungal databases were in bad shape and lagging as compared to the other groups of uh, uh, organisms. And uh, moreover, with the increase in the studies of diversity, they, there's even a greater need uh, of accumulating this fungal database. And I think uh, we need similar efforts in other groups of fungi too. So thank you. Thank you so much for uh, voluntarily uh, doing the service of uh, compiling the marine uh, database. Thank you so much for taking time out for our talk. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a nice day. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Bye-bye. See you soon somewhere. Yes. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. So, uh, shall we move to our next uh, talk? Yes, Varda, Dr. Varda is ready. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, coming to our next talk uh, is uh, by Dr. Varda uh, Damre. So, Dr. Damre is an assistant professor at uh, Goa University uh, and has uh, a PhD in marine sciences and a background of micro.